Welcome back to Liquid Lunch on Biz TV. It's my final two segments here, John. Let's do it. Don't screw it up. How are we doing in this second hour, Mike? I think we're doing pretty well, are Dr. Melanie. Are we going Melanie. through it quick or are we going through it slow? We're breezing through hour two. There you go. All right. <laughs> yeah. Check that fuck. There's another point. There's another all right. What am I? What am I up to right now? What's my score? You're still on A, but you I'm can still on screw A. It. it can all go horribly bad <laughs> at any minute. A great protest on Wednesday went horribly bad in the last few right. minutes when everybody stormed the Capitol and then all the good was out the window. So don't storm the Capitol to end the show today. Well, hopefully this isn't the segment that uh, ends everything terribly because we do have Mark Smith on. He's a GOP congressional strategist. Mark, how are you today? I believe we, think we have Mark we Smith. Have him, I but hear him. Yeah, I don't, maybe he can't hear us. Unmute your... Uh, Unmute your Zoom, Mark. The little microphone in the bottom left there. If you hear us, unmute. Unmute. <laughs> All right, while we wait for Mark, though, we touched on it last segment, but we're t saying, where is the Republican Party going from here? Are they, are they going to stay together, maybe see who the next president is, if it's going to be Trump as their candidate? Or is it going to be Pence? Or is it going to be someone else? Is there a complete split? Look, I would love to hear um, Mark Smith's views on this, because Mark, I know he's been with us before. He's a great uh, Republican strategist. But, you know, from my perspective, I think the Republican Party is showing their true colors um, throughout this whole um, election ending here. Um, many of them did not support Trump. Many, you know, many in the Republican Party have been calling on him to, to concede, to start a peaceful transition, not many of them stood by the president. You know, Lindsey Graham, many people saying that he went bad the other night. Mitch McConnell went bad. Mike Even Pence went bad. I'd like to add Kelly Loeffler to that because after all the support oh Trump God. showed she for just, her. She just wrote a political and, epitaph. Yep. No doubt about it. All right, I think we have Mark Smith now. Okay. We do not. I heard him for a second yeah. there. But all right, we're waiting for Mark but, Smith. No, but yeah. Kelly Loeffler, right? Her husband is this guy, Jeff Sprecher. And Jeff Sprecher is probably one of the most innovative and intelligent guys in, in the world, uh, if not, you know, in the universe, okay? He started um, the ICE, which is the International um, Commodities Exchange, and he came up with this way to um, package up electrical data and 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 trade electricity and availability of electricity and it turned out he became a multi bajillionaire he actually bought the New York Stock Exchange the primary share you could do that yeah he's his wife is the richest person in Senate okay wow. so if you have all that money and you can spend as much as you want on your campaign and you know reports of two to three hundred million was spent on 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 the camp on her campaign and you can't win, it says a lot about what you are as a candidate. Yeah. And then I think, you know, she was showing, telling everyone she's going to vote to reject the, the, the vote totals. <clears throat> and then as soon as she lost, um, she flip-flopped on that. And I think yep. everyone saw her true colors then that, you know, she thought maybe she was preserving the integrity of a political career. I think she just threw it in the toilet, quite yeah. frankly. You know? And... Zen Sams, when she was on Wednesday filming, she said, you know, she was never really a Trump person, but they, I mean, she was a Republican. Trump wanted to keep the Senate. He knew if they did have the Senate, they won on, on Tuesday in Georgia. Wednesday would probably be a lot easier. Right. But I don't know. Go down she, that way. Do we have Mark? I hear him. Yeah, I hear him I too. Hear, we it's hear like, him in our ear. All right, but um, while we wait on him, Mike what about Ted Cruz? You know, Ted, he's, Ted Cruz, I think, kind of came out of this thing smelling like a rose, yeah. to be honest with you. you know. uh, and Ted Cruz is no slouch. I'm not the biggest fan of Ted Cruz. Uh, I thought he pandered a lot in the last presidential election by hanging around longer than he should, but he wanted to get all the notoriety he could, and it worked out. But he turned out to be one of the most vociferous supporters of the president yeah. right down to the end. And I think, you know, if Biden becomes president and Donald Trump decides that, you know, he's not going to be bothered again with this whole mm -hmm. thing in four years, 
I would say right now Ted Cruz is the perennial front runner. And and I'd have to the, agree with that. Just I've noticed the way he's taken leadership over a guy like Josh Hall, he's a little younger and he hasn't been there as long and then you got Ted Cruz who's ran for president in the past and just he knows what he's doing, he knows how to lead, he can he's trying to make another push for that presidential campaign if, I if he does no <laughs> doubt about it. All right, we have Mark Smith. Okay. All right. Well, he, see Mark, if Mark see Smith. if we're muted on this. Yeah, Zoom no. Camera. Yeah, no. Maybe you could just send him a note. Oh, okay. All right. And you know what? Um, the other question many people are asking, Mike, and I'd love to hear what you think and what some younger people think. Do you think it's worth it for Trump to take another wait four years and take another run at it? Isn't he seventy-eight or somewhere around there? So yeah, four years from now, late he'll be he'll be up in the 80s, and I thought I feel like it's the same thing that's going on with Joe Biden. He's going to be 80 in a few years, and people don't know if he's going to be able to continue leading at a certain point. They're just going to bring in Kamala Harris. So I do think my ideology, especially being younger, is we need a younger person in office. And uh, I just don't think for Trump it's realistic at that age. So maybe uh, Ted Cruz. Ted might Cruz be is a definitely a guy that comes into mind. I don't think Mike Pence has any shot whatsoever. I think he. I think, I think he ruined it. And I thought going into the election when Tr Pence was supposed to be helping out Trump, getting him involved, it would be Pence as the president in 2024 and Cruz as the vice president. You never know, but I think Mike Pence's political career is over after this. Yeah. Quite frankly, I, I you know, uh, some of these emails that Lynn Wood is putting out, I mean, they make it's, me think it's that dangerous, Pence may, yeah. yeah, Pence may um, actually get some law enforcement after him. Although, with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris coming in, taking over the Department of Justice now, Merrick Garland, the guy that they wanted to make a judge under Obama, who got nixed, now he's going to be the Attorney General. They're saying so. Anybody that was a collaborator to help Biden go into office, I think is going to be safe from prosecution. And just one other question I had, because this is going back a couple weeks now when Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani, they brought everything to the Supreme Court. And we knew we had the majority in the Supreme Court. Trump's appointed three of them. And they kind of just shot everything down with this voter fraud uh, evidence. What do you think about that? Well, look, um, you know, there's all kinds of accounts out there that John Roberts, the chief justice of the Supreme Court, who's been no fan of Trump, he's voted against Trump many, he's voted with the minority of the Democrats a few times. Um, and the word is that Roberts thought that the court getting involved and changing the outcome of the election would cause wide, widespread rioting and looting and, and, and all kinds of civil unrest. And he came down with an edict that he's not going to, the Supreme Court's not going to weigh in on this. And, you know, you got Alito there, you got Gorsuch there, you got Kavanaugh, you got Amy Coney Barrett. But um, a lot of the philosophy of the court is run by the Chief Justice, and that's John Roberts. So uh, Biden's going to be in the executive branch. They have the, the legislative branch. And... Right now, we have majority in the judicial, but it doesn't seem that way. And yeah, that's no. I, I I wish, I wish the right case could have got to them. Yeah. Where John Roberts did not have the ability to sway mm -hmm. it away from the court, but it looks like it didn't happen. And you know, some crazy things happen in this election, Mike. You know, some of the arguments at the Supreme Court, they were saying, well, you should have brought this case before the election if you knew all these things were wrong. You know what I mean? They go, well, we, but we, yeah, how do you do we that? thought they were wrong, but we didn't know. Now that we know, we're bringing it now. And they say, well, now it's too late. And now it won't have a consequential and this, that, and the other thing. So, you know, you kind of basically telling people every candidate for now on would need to bring a lawsuit before, before the election yeah. so that they've put their complaint on the record. And then... You know, people are going to hate candidates who are running for office and are already suing the other but, candidates. Yeah, then, but, but how about this? We have all the Dominion evidence, and now with Democrats being in power, they might look to take, they might use, to, you look, you use Dominion in every other election. So if 2024 rolls around and we got Dominion, isn't that a case right there? Mike, 
Like I told you, don't screw up the last two seconds. Oh. I was on Newsmax two weeks ago. They made me read this whole thing oh. about how we have no evidence of Dominion changing votes. We have no evidence that Spartmatic uh. is owned by George Soros. Now you're saying we have the evidence again. The guys at Newsmax are going to kill me. Oh. We have, let me just uh, fix that. Uh, at Liquid Lunch, we have no evidence that Dominion or Smartmatic played any role in the changing of votes in the 2020 election. We have no evidence that George Soros has an ownership stake in Smartmatic or Dominion, nor do we have any evidence whatsoever that Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, Susan Feinstein, or any of their family members are investors in Smartmatic. How was that? Was that good? Yeah, it memorized. Okay, pretty much. But um, now, uh, I read it because I was working for Newsmax, and that was the corporate spiel that we had to give out. But me personally, in my heart, I think there's a lot of evidence. Sorry. All right. All right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we we're going to take, take a, a quick break. break. Um, that was Mark insane. Schmidt. Oh, yeah. You owe me a Coke. Uh, Mark Smith, we couldn't get on, and we had some technical difficulties, but we are going to come back with our good buddy, Dr. Barry Goldsmith, who's going to crack you up like he does every week to wrap up your week on a funny, freaky Friday on Liquid Lunch.